All right, everybody. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more uh, discussion on theorems and circuit analysis. So now we're going to look at superposition. Uh, this is a really interesting concept. Um, I'm not a mathematician, uh, physicist. Uh, I can't fully explain um, the uh, detailed aspects of why this works. But as you start to understand circuit analysis a little bit better, you'll start to uh, build an intuitive understanding of why this works. So I've got this circuit here. Just a simple little thing uh, other than it has a voltage source and a current source. But we just got three resistors here. Uh, and I'm going to start it up and we'll see the currents flowing through it. Uh, this circuit as it is can be a little bit difficult to analyze and know what the voltage here at this node is, node 2, um, and then understanding the currents on it. Is this current going to push into this voltage source or is this voltage source going to impose on this current source? I don't know. It, it makes it difficult. We can sit down and do some advanced analysis to find out or we can use superposition. And what superposition does is you take, uh, you analyze the circuit as a whole with each individual source. So down here I'm going to analyze the voltage source. Uh, to do that I have to remove all other sources. So if it's a current source, you open it. Basically just remove that component from it and leave the rest of the circuit as is. Down here we're going to analyze just the current source. Um, which means we have to remove the voltage source and we short circuit voltage sources. So I have the measurements here. They're going to show us the values. We could also look at this mathematically. We could easily understand by looking at this, this resistor here isn't going to do anything. There's not going to be any voltage drop across it. There's going to be no current flowing through it because it's a dead end path. So we simply have a series connection here. We could easily use uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, do a voltage divider and find out this voltage. We can come over here and look at this. We've got a current source coming through here. Now we can easily determine the voltage drop across this because Ohm's law. Then our current's going to divide. We can just do a current divider uh, to find out what the current flowing through each one is. Uh, or we could do a parallel calculation to get an equivalent resistance and use Ohm's law to find the voltage here. Um, really easy to analyze these separately. Then all we have to do is combine them. So if we find this voltage here, this voltage here, we add them together and that gives us the voltage here. And this only works in linear circuits. If we had diodes in here, that's going to throw everything for a muck uh, due to having to take into account current flow and voltages is the uh, nonlinear device operating. So uh, we, we're only going to use this on linear circuits. So I'm going to run this for a second to get us some values. So we can see here in the full circuit it's telling us 78.75 volts. If we look down here at our uh, just our voltage source analysis uh, we get 3.75 volts and that goes with what I was saying about the voltage divider circuit. Uh, the majority of our 5 volts is appearing across this 300 ohms. Um, so that seems legitimate. When we come over here and look at the current source, we're showing 75 volts. Uh, well, we've got a parallel connection here of roughly 8, 900, or, I mean, uh, 80, 90 ohms, um, maybe uh, 70 ohms. And so 1 amp flowing through roughly 70 ohms would be 70 volts. So it's showing 75. If I did the calculation, I don't have I don't have the calculator here with me, but um, it looks like it's 75 ohms parallel uh, connection here. So one amp through it, 75 volts. 75 volts plus 3.75 volts gets us 78.75 volts. If we look at our currents, we got 12.5 milliamps. We got 250 milliamps. That's going to be 265 milliamps and oh wait. Excuse me, I had 262.5 milliamps. Um, and so 
you know, this superposition is a really nice way to analyze some complex circuits. I like this to handle conditions when we get issues like supernode and super mesh. They really help eliminate a lot of the complexity. Now there may be more math in doing this, but it's much easier to keep track of everything. So hopefully that helps you uh, further analyze circuits and understand what superposition is. It's just a quick run through. Now, good luck and we'll see you in the next one.